Hey everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be the patch 11.6 notes rundown. I do know that this is on my main channel right now, and I apologize for that. Normally, it's going to be uploaded on T1 Fighting. You can find T1 Fighting in the link below. It's normally where I upload a lot of the EDU videos and the patch notes, but I just got in the middle of a move. Currently, I'm in an apartment right now. There's no heat, there's no water and whatnot, so that's why I'm wearing the mask, why I have a jacket on, all that other good jazz. But let's just get right into the patch notes, because I wanted to get the patch notes out, even if we weren't going to have time to properly edit it and hit the time schedule because of all the stuff going on right now. So, being the world's best broken clock that's right only two times a day and one of the best entertainers in the League of Legends scene, I thought, you know what? Let's let's do a rundown. All right, so Akali. Base health decreased and eager. Growth increased, passive energy store removed, Q cost increased early and decreased later, bonus damage removed, W now increases Akali's maximum energy. E total damage increased, first hit damage ratio decreased, second hit damage ratio increased, R first, okay, that's a lot of changes. What is going on? Okay, so I completely apologize. So basically, if you guys don't know, certain content creators uh, get patch notes earlier than their official release. I have a website that is meant to obviously mimic and mock Riot's website so that it looks like a completely normal thing. However, it seems like when we put the script into the website, it doesn't have the information to show the changes. So, <laughs> bit of a blunder here. Um, so basically, from what I'm reading though, however, is it does look like Akali's actually buffed for pro play, pretty much. Balancing the early laning phases is always a thing that a higher level player or pro player is going to be able to do a lot better than lower MMR, middle MMR players, and in general, just getting a lot more damage added back into her is definitely very good. It sounds like the direction that they're going with the changes, even though I don't have the numbers right in front of me, seems like it would actually be pretty good for where Akali is actually lacking or getting stunted right now. The early game is obviously somewhat problematic for her, and it always sort of has been, but generally professional players, if they pick her in right spots or if they pick her in spots where she's allowed to fall behind, it's not really going to matter that much. Nar, W bonus damage decreased. Despite being mini, Nar has been in Mega 4 pro play, so we're pulling back on his in-lane harass. Bonus damage 10 to 50 to 0 to 40. This is a pretty big change because I don't know if you can actually justify putting two points into it just to have some sort of value on the bonus damage. Maybe you end up, maybe you can, but I don't think this really is going to attack or influence the stuff that's making Gnar appear inside a pro play right now, so it doesn't really matter. The other thing about the W on Hyper is that W is max second on Gnar, so you start getting some of the damage back at level 8 roughly, and the damage being missing is not super problematic. 10 is it's going to be somewhat noticeable in bully lanes for Nar, but outside of that, again, doesn't really matter that much. Hecarim, Q-base damage decreased later. Q-rampage, base damage 60 to 220, or wait, 60 to 228 to 60 to 208. This is actually quite a lot of damage missing off of his Q, and it's actually even more problematic when you consider that a lot of Hecarims right now are going for the tank Hecarim build, so any loss to base damages is actually going to hit him a lot harder than it should. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Hecarim getting nerfed at all. I don't think he's as problematic as whatever people are perceiving him to be. Maybe his win rates inside of solo queue is going to be a little bit different or something, but realistically, uh, he, he just sort of feels like a filler, like, balanced pick right now. At least that's how I perceive him anyway. Karthus, Q-base damage decreased later. Q-lay waste is going from 45 to 125, uh, 90 to 250, to 45 to 115, 90 to 230. So... The isolated damage is obviously going to be felt later on. Q is obviously his first ability max, so you're going to start feeling it, you know, inside of team fights or inside of early game scam skirmishes and whatnot. Inside of the clear, I'm not sure how it affects his jungle clear. Karthus has had a lot of hits up and down, and it just feels like it's a balancing nightmare for Riot. This is definitely going to hurt him a little bit. But it shouldn't, it should not be the reason that Karthus would ever fall out of flavor. What I would say is that this is actually a lot more problematic for lane Karthus than it is for jungle Karthus in particular, because that's where the isolated cues are actually going to be a lot more meaningful. LeBlanc, W cost decreased later. Okay, distortion, 60 to 120 mana to 60 to 100 mana. So distor distortion cost going down a little bit. I don't think it's actually that big right now, because a lot of the items that LeBlanc is going inside of lane, I think that some of them have started picking up Everfrost and whatnot. She doesn't really have as big of problems with the mana pool. Have Having a little bit more access to some mana is definitely not the woes that LeBlanc's facing right now that's gating her from coming back into pro play. Generally, it's just really hard to balance champions like LeBlanc because she's an assassin, and anytime you have a champion that can excel very much in solo queue but has a lot of difficulty in competitive, it ends up becoming a balancing nightmare for a riot. R, Lilia cooldown increased. R, Lilting Lullaby, 130 to 90 seconds to 150 to 110 seconds. Okay, Lilting Lullaby is going up a bit at rank 1, at rank 2 as well, and then at rank 3, but rank 3 doesn't really 
really matter that much, I, I don't think. Obviously, uh, Lilting Lullaby on Lilia, it is a influential ultimate, because generally whenever you have it up on Lilia inside of the jungle, you can look to make plays and look to get kills. Having the cooldown increased on it is something that I think is somewhat impactful, given the nature of her inside of the jungle, but I wouldn't say that it's as impactful as a ultimate that you're actively looking always instantly to use off of cooldown. And given that she's not a laner, it's not going to be as impactful, because ganks are somewhat conditional as well on your laners, not just yourself. So the cooldown being missing there, it is going to be noticeable, but I don't think it's the end of the world. Also, I would like to just congratulate Riot, actually, on how effective of a balancing job they did at Lilia as well as Yone, I believe. These are two champions that really haven't received a whole lot of nerfs since they've come out, and I, I think that's so impressive in a time where it seems like a lot of things are balancing nightmares. Pike equal down now decreases. Undertow, 15 seconds to 15 to 11 seconds. This is really, 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 really big. It makes him so much more slippery. It means that mid lane pike as well as, well, mid lane pike in addition to support pike gets a lot of extra power when you start getting points into Phantom Undertow. And given the changes that he had to his gray skin, plus getting utility like this, it strengthens pike's ability to basically be utility centric so it is pretty interesting overall the direction that they are going with pike because he's just getting a lot more utility renekton <laughs> okay renekton okay so i'm gonna be doing a deep dive on renekton in coming days after this video is probably out but our dominus bonus health 250 to 750 to 250 to 550 that is a that is a very noticeable hit, and the other thing that's noticeable about this is that if you end up going for the Prowler's Claw Renekton, this means that you're going to be missing a lot of extra HP that you normally had as buffer for the fact that you were going for an all-out damage build. This is a really scary nerf that I don't... Uh... I mean, it, it, it doesn't do anything in the initial laning phase, and generally, like, Renekton's really big window of getting ahead is going to be early and mid-game transition, and then he'll start tapering off a little bit. I do think that 200 HP, even in the later stages of the game, actually is a pretty big deal for a champion like him. Losing 100 HP in mid-game teamfights for him, especially if he's going for the Assassin build, that's something that can definitely be, be felt. I don't think that I would necessarily scoff at that. Uh, if he's going to be going for, like, the bruisery type of Renekton, I don't think it's going to be as impactful, but it's definitely something that's going to be noticed. Regardless, I like that Raya is taking it cautious, it seems, with how they're choosing to nerf him. By nerfing only his HP, you're ultimately requiring Renekton players to be more intelligent when they're choosing to engage, and I think that's a very healthy way to approach it. Silas, passive, unshackled, bonus attack speed increased, W cooldown cost and heal ratio decreased. Passive, uh, pet predicate burst, 60 to 120 percent. Uh, I don't know what that... That is a very weird buff. W Kingslayer, 13 to 7 seconds to 13 to 6 seconds, cost 70 to 110 mana, 60 to 100 mana, heal ratio 50% AP to 45% AP. Okay, so the thing is, is that he loses a lot of healing, but the argument that you could end up having is that he's able to cast the ability a little bit more often, and now obviously with the attack speed being there, if, if Silas ends up taking Conqueror or something, uh, he's going to be autoing a lot more, he'll get EHP through that means and whatnot. Um, this is an interesting approach to Silas, but I think that the real problem for Silas right now is that AP items in general are really not that good, and he has a hard time coming by a lot of AP. So what ends up happening is he often gets stuck on items, and that's the thing that's gating him right now. So I can acknowledge that these are definitely buffs, and they are good buffs in the right direction, but I think Silas is being hit indirectly by other things. Urgot, W on hit damage effectiveness decreased. W purge, on hit damage effectiveness, 75 to 50%. So Urgot obviously popping up a lot lately because of the Titanic Hydra Urgot with the W purge and the on hit effectiveness, and I think that this change is obviously aimed at something like that, but I don't think it actually stands to remove Urgot from the meta. I think Urgot's been a very slept-upon champion for quite a while now, and that he's very well positioned against the entire field of popular champions. So I don't think that anyone should be completely thrown off by this type of a nerf, even though yes, it is going to hit him, and especially his popular build right now. Volibear. W healing from monsters is no longer halved. E cap damage now flat. W frenzied mall. Healing from wounded monsters no longer halved. Still reduced against minions. Okay. E sky splitter. Cap damage 150 to 750 to 750 at all ranks. This is huge. Huge for Volibear jungle. 
Okay, this is massive because his sustain increases so much, and then his clear is going to become a lot better earlier on. These are definitely nice changes. He obviously liked the change to Turbo Chem Tank. He's a very big fan of that item because it gives him a lot of things that he's basically missing in his own kit, and that just having that item is very powerful. Volibear is a champion that is sort of like face rolly, and I think that he's always going to be better positioned inside of solo queue than he is going to be inside of competitive. No one can deny, though, that he does have early game simplicity on his side. He's very very akin to Olaf in that regard, or set jungle of old, and so with the way that the jungle and other things are going right now, I could see Volibear popping back up, and I don't think he's going to be able to contend with the S-tier junglers by any means, such as like Udyr, Lilia, and things of that nature, unless there's other buffs that are going to come his way. Xin Zhao! Passive dealing, okay, so this is a lot to take in. Passive uh, healing is decreased, stat consumption, bug fix, Q bonus damage, decreased early, W cooldown, okay. So this is a lot of stuff that's going on right now. Okay, passive determination. Uh, 10 to 120, levels 1 to 18, to 7 to 92 at 1 to 18, okay. Uh, Zinzao now, now uh, correctly, okay, so they have a bug, uh, bug fix, 3 talent strike is going to be uh, 20 to 52 to 16 to 52. W, uh, wind becomes lightning, cooldown. 12 to 8 seconds to 12 to 6 seconds. Seconds. Cost is increased by 15 mana, doesn't really matter. Reduce mana uh, damage against minions, 50% to 50 to 0%, levels 1 to 16, okay? Splash cast time, 0 0.5 to 0 0.4 seconds, based on attack speed to 0 0.5 seconds flat. Thrust damage modifier, now increased by up to 33%, based on critical strike chance. Okay. Uh, thrust range, 900 to 1,000. Thrust missile speed, 5,000 to 6,250. That's pretty big. New talent. Thrust now challenges enemy champion and monsters, reveal them for 3 seconds. That's huge. Audacious charge. Uh, not much of a challenge. Audacious charge cast range increased to 1,100 on charged enemies. That's big as well. Passive heal AP ratio increased. W2 damage uh, ratio now scales with AP. R now scales with AP. Whoa, okay. Uh, AP adjustments. Passive determination is up by AP. Wind becomes uh, lightning, gets 50% ability power, and then R crescent guard gets 100% uh, 100, 100% AD, 110% AP. <clears throat> okay, so this is really big. This means that, like, Nasher's Tooth or, like, Hybrid Zin Zhao might end up being a real legitimate path. I'm just sort of trying to grapple in my mind right now, like, what would possibly be his build path um, if you would end up going something like Hybrid Zin Zhao? Maybe you could do something like a Mortal Shield Bow with Nasher's Tooth, or maybe looking at Kale for, like, a reference could actually be somewhat effective. But I think that it, there's probably going to be some sort of a mixture for his itemization, and he'll end up turning into a champion like Akali or Kale of old. Although, maybe he just actually goes full AP, but what would a full AP Zin Zhao build look like? I'm actually not sure, and I'm not about to, like, pause in Theorycraft for a while on what that could look like. I do just think that it's interesting. It's probably going to involve Nashra's Tooth no matter what now, depending on how his build goes forward. Healing items. The amount of systematic healing or healing from runes is still trending high. Okay, Immortal Shield Bell down by 2%. Mortal Shield Bell no longer grants 15% lifesteal for 8 seconds. Lifeline. Immortal Shield Bell now grants 13 to 35 AD when triggered. Okay. Uh, shield is also up by a very large amount. So a lot of people, they were asking me this question in regards to Aurelia. They were asking me this question in regards to Graves and, like, a lot, a lot of other champions that use uh, Immortal Shield Bow. I think this change is actually probably buffing those types of champions. The champions that are trying to use it from a bruisery standpoint, I think, are obviously going to be buffed. However, I do think that Marksmen and champions like that that are using it are probably just going to be nerfed. That, that's how I'm anticipating this type of a change. So, um, that, that's that. Blade of the Ruin King. Lifesteal, 12 to 10%, and Siphon Damage, 40 to 120, 240 to 450. Um, this is definitely a change the Blade of the Rune King, but again, I think I would actually probably rather have the damage than I would rather just have the lifesteal. Because remember, sometimes you have items that heal you for the damage that you're dealing, so just the loss of the lifesteal on Blade of the Rune King doesn't exactly paint a whole picture, because you're getting extra damage, and if you're getting extra damage, then maybe you're getting healing from other sources. Uh, obviously, it's not always going to be black and white, but I think that a lot of the uh, reaction to these changes initially are a little bit overreacted, yeah. Steric's Gage, Bloodlust. After dealing damage uh, to or taking damage from an enemy champion, the first stack heals you for 2% melee, 1.2% ranged of maximum health, decreasing by 50% per stack afterwards over 6 seconds. That's definitely a uh, an interesting change to Sterics. I don't know if this means that the shield is gone. That would be absolutely terrible. I think this is just the uh, the passive thing on it, right? I think that's fine. Okay, Leandre's Anguish. Rest in pieces, Leandre's Torment. Forever forever remembered. Forever remembered. The war versus Morello, it took it out. And now, uh, you know, it's no longer tormented. Now it's just an anguish. That's, that's what's happened. Anyways... Leandre's no longer grants 5% magic penetration per second against burning targets. Torment bonus damage. Leandre's now grants up to 12% bonus magic damage to champions based on their bonus health. Maximum 1250 bonus health. 
Okay, so here's the thing about what I don't like about this. This is basically Riot deciding that you must itemize a certain way with your mythics. And I think that is a very unhealthy thing to do. Because ultimately what they're aiming to do now with Leandres is they're making it so that even if you would normally want pen or something from Ludens, if the enemy team just has a lot of tanks, you are now hyper-incentivized to go into Leandres' anguish. And I don't think that's intelligent itemization if they're ultimately just forcing it upon you. And I think that's really stupid. The thing I don't like about this is that obviously champions who are able to use utilize AoE and dots now lose a lot of power, um, especially if they had a lot of synergy with Demonic Embrace or like their passive or anything like that. It's going to hit a lot of champions that liked that before, and this item I imagine is just going to turn into a wasteland. I actually can't imagine a mage right now that would still want to ever build Leandres except in hyper-specific points, but if that's going to be the case, why is it a mythic instead of a legendary? Ludens Tempest. Like Leandres above, we're adding another AP mythic to the mix. This should be a better option for mages who deal damage over time. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, dealing, ability, uh, dealing ability damage to an enemy now reduces echoes by 0 0.5 seconds up to 3 seconds per ability. Wow, that's big for dots. Okay, so basically all the dot users and all of the previous Leandres people, they just moved over to Ludens. That's it. That's the that's the TLDR, okay? If you used to build Leandres, you're now just building Ludens unless the opponent has, like, tons of tanks on the enemy team. Like, a lot of tanks. A lot of tanks, Okay. That's pretty much uh, what, what's, uh, uh, it just dawned on me. So wait a minute, Leandres actually isn't losing its burn damage based on their max health. It's just having the magic penetration removed. I guess that's actually not as bad as I thought that it was, and it's actually not as forceful by Riot. That just dawned on me for a second. And the first time over I was reading it, I was totally wrong on the idea that it was only now going to be a mythic against legendaries. Or not, le it was only going to be a mythic against tanks. The reality is, is that generally, if you're building Leandres and the opponents are going to be having a lot of HP, generally that's where the 5% magic penetration probably would have came in, because it probably means that they're tanks. And now getting the 12% bonus magic damage probably just means that you kill those champions faster. The 5% magic uh, per second damage against squishies didn't really matter all that much when you ended up just doing out the math, and it's not the reason that you built the item in the first place. So now this is ultimately just going to become a math equation that I'm very interested to look at between Ludens and Leandres, in that... If you are a dot champion like Malzahar or like Lilia or something of that nature, is Ludens now just better than Leandre's Anguish, given that Leandre's can actually still AoE people, whereas the Ludens proc is only going to proc off of maybe someone that's still afflicted by it and whatnot? This is going to be very interesting. I'm very excited to actually dive into it. I actually... Uh, just take back what I said about uh, Riot uh, pigeonholing the items into a specific uh, way. And I think this actually creates more uh, strategical thinking, um, at, le at least maybe until it's solved or something like that. Uh, but I, I think this is actually very interesting, and it just dawned on me after looking at both of them. Robidon's Death Cap. Looking to make Robidon's a more snug and budget-friendly fit as a third purchase. 3800 to 3600 So I know that on one of my co-streams recently on LCS, I think I said that Robidon should go down to like 3400 gold if they, it was going to keep the fact that it, it's just not performing as well as it did before. Losing 200 gold on it, it is somewhat nice, but it points in the game it could ultimately be one minion wave or it could be two minion waves. So you're looking at anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute delay. I don't think that that is as great for an item that generally you're getting third in your item path. I don't think that that's actually going to be that sizable of a buff. I would like to see this gold number come down a little bit more and for it to retain all of its current stats, but I don't know. Obviously, this is a nice buff for the champions that are relying on AP um, in order to have effectiveness, but the reality is, is that I think that there's so many better utility items that offer so much more than just raw AP that come in and slot in as third or fourth item that Robidon's is still probably going to be outclassed even though it's down by 200 gold. Seeker's Arm Guard. Okay, so Seeker's and Verdant are both being nerfed now. So the anti-fun mini tank items inside of the early laning phase, Riot has decided that they do not like that. Okay. Bonus armor per kill, 1 to 0 0.5. Max armor, 30 to 15. That is, like, that is insane. This is such an insane hit to the item. And then Verdant Barrier, uh, magic resist per kill, 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. Max, max uh, magic resist, 15 to 9. Ability power, 25 to 20. So Verdant's actually hit, I think, a little bit less than Seeker's Arm Guard is, because I think that Seeker's is more necessary in those matchups when you're up against 80 Assassins or 80 Champions as a Mage. Whereas Verdant Barrier, we've been playing without it for so long, there's obviously ways to play through lanes without it. Uh, a lot of people, sometimes they just go Merc Treads, they sit on Null Magic Mantle or so whatnot. Verdant Barrier is really there as a hyper-specific item to basically answer the enemy mage as well as usually their jungler, or curve into uh, Banshee's Veil later on in the game. So I think that it's nice that Verdant got hit 
less than Seekers did, at least in a practical sense, but it, it definitely is uh, still a little sad. Trelia's battle song, Inspire Cooldown, is going to go down by 15 seconds. This is kind of big. The cooldown going down by Trelia's battle song I don't think makes this compete with Moonstone, like what they're talking about, because Moonstone is just such a broken item on enchanters in general. So going down by 15 seconds, helping with your engage and whatnot, I don't think it's actually all that impactful uh, whatsoever. Definitely not by any means by willing to give up Moonstone or nowhere. 15 seconds is not big enough. I think if it had lower, if it drastically lower cooldown than it had right now, there could probably be arguments for it in some instant, in some instances. But I don't think that if you're playing an enchanter, I think passing up Moonstone is probably just too strong. Stridebreaker. It's time for Stridebreaker to take a break. So health is going to go down by 100. That is another big hit to this item. And this is going to affect a lot of champions as well. And it kind of hurts. I'm not going to lie. It definitely does kind of hurt when certain legendaries start outperforming potentially maybe certain mythics, which maybe that's the direction that we're headed towards. I'm not even quite sure. Iron Whip Spike. Uh, so gold cost is going to be down by 1100 and cooldown 15 to 20 seconds. I think this is totally fine. I think this is actually probably a buff to the item. So again, like I mentioned earlier above for Rabadon's Death Cap, Iron Spike Whip is an item that you get early on into the game. And early on into the game, 30 seconds to a minute is actually very, very big for champions, whereas it's not as meaningful uh, when you're talking Talking about third and fourth items, so I think this one's very good. Sunfire Aegis, ability has 15 to 20. Immolates uh, sequence damage, 10 damage per second, up to 60%. 12 damage, uh, 12 per second, up to 72%. Okay, so Sunfire is actually starting to get some buffs back into it. I like the fact that they gave it back flat ability haste and whatnot. I think this probably puts the item back onto the map with some of the damage that it's getting getting over the Frostfire or over the Turbo Chem Tank. So this is definitely a nice uh, bump in the right direction. Oh, my Christmas came early. So they actually did... All right, so I think a lot of people will perceive this as a nerf to the item, where the, the item's going to go up uh, by 200 gold, but you're going to get 5 ability power. Now, 5 ability power is not a lot, but the reality is, is that on a lot of champions, Void Staff will be built third or second, and if you're building it third or second after your standard mythic, you're already inside of the mid game. And inside of the mid game, 200 gold again. It is going to be either one whole minute or potentially as as low as 30 seconds, right? Depending on the the wave that um, you're depending on the wave that you're running up to and getting, while also factoring in the recall timer and the on map gold accumulation that you just passively generate and whatnot. So it's actually, it's kind of nice. You're, you're basically being asked to potentially wait one minute or a little, maybe a little bit longer and you get five extra ability power. It's not super big, but I would rather have this at that stage of the game than just have the item come online a little bit faster. Obviously, there's going to be some instances where getting this item is going to maybe make or break certain situations, and that is a whole other can of worms uh, where you could definitely say that getting it uh, a little bit sooner is going to be more beneficial. I would probably say that the champions who might operate with that line of thought would be like AP Assassins that want to just keep powering into the items really, really, really quickly, but any mid laners that are going down the control route or, you know, basically being AP carries that are meant to come online in the later stages, they'll like the little bit of extra ability power, and I don't think that they're, they're going to be that concerned with waiting that long. Okay, jungle camp changes. All right, so heal on Gromp, 60 to 230 to 90 to 243. That's really nice for the early game sustain. XP is also up by a little bit, and so this is a nice little buff in the right direction. And then smite base heal is also up from 70 to 90. So both of these are really nice buffs for the jungle so far. Teleport addressing unintuitive and frustrating scenarios around teleport, such as teleporting and zooming right back into lane after an elite death. In compensation, we're giving it a buff to maintain its power as a playmaking tool. Teleport now removes Moves home start and respawn home guard. Okay. Uh, bonus movement speed 30 to 50 percent at levels 1, 6, 11 to just a flat 50 percent. That's really big. Cooldown 420 to 210 to 420 to 200 or 240 to 210. These are really big buffs for teleport. This is very, very, very big. I'm actually curious what exactly. Uh, you should probably check out pa uh, Freak's patch rundown about this. This is really big, and one of the things that I think is underappreciated right now is Marksman taking this as a summoner spell. It seems like a lot of them have forgotten. And with champions like Varus potentially being, you know, coming back on the radar, Senna being really strong right now and whatnot, Teleport is definitely going to have to be a rune that even Marksmen have to maybe start remembering because it's just falling completely out of flavor. Runes, Fleet Footwork, Heal Ratio, 30% AP to 20% AP. So this is a rune that mostly targets cost 
Kassadin and Silas off the top of my head, unless Silas is taking the Conqueror rune, like I mentioned earlier on. This is something that does hurt the early game sustain, but it's not super, super big. I'm sure there's other champions that do end up utilizing this. I think maybe Echo takes it in some of the matchups, but not very common. I'm trying to think of other champions off the top of my head, and I don't know why I'm failing at doing so. Maybe Zin Zhao or something was about to start taking this. Who who actually even knows? Maybe it's a pre-nerf in anticipation for Zin Zhao. I, I don't really know. But yeah, I, th I think it's mostly aimed at those two champions in particular that I mentioned. Ravnus Hunter no longer has a base of 1% Omni Vamp, 1.7 to 1.5%. Okay, so this is pretty weird. Ravenous Hunter, I think, is actually overstated as a rune, especially when you're going Domination Secondary. You can achieve really similar results in a lot of ways if you just go Resolve and you end up going to the Resolve Tree, because usually the champions that are going into the Domination Tree second, outside of the Ravenous Hunter rune or just the Hunter runes in general, generally the other runes aren't really that impactful unless you're a great user of Cheap Shot or something, or if you have a lot of power with Taste of Blood. Generally the other things are pretty luxurious and they don't really play a very big part in the early or mid stages of the game, and it's not as impactful as some of the other trees. So I think that Resolve Tree probably just gets looked at a lot more. Ravenous Hunter thing, definitely a little bit weird. Anyways, uh, Noxus Clash is uh, something that's going on after Zon, the next Clash Challenge will be Noxus themed. And I do believe if you are watching this, the patron patch 11.6, uh, both solo queue and Clash tier lists, they will be out about a day late or two, just because of all the stuff that's been going on with me the last couple of days. And so that is pretty much it for the patch notes. Um, we could do a little bit of a recap, but I don't think, I think I actually went more into detail than I normally do on a lot of things, so I don't think a recap is totally necessary. There's some competitive changes in here. I think the big thing is going to be the Xin Zhao, and then as always, we're going to get into the champion skin. So, I don't really know what this is. Apparently this was Garen, and the reason that I just did a double take right there is because I actually thought this was Wukong for a second, because I saw a tail, but, oh, okay, it's Garen and, okay, there's a Garen over here. Wow, he does not really stand out. Is there a Wukong too? Okay. That's kind of weird. I feel like the Garen splash art actually shows Wukong more, and that the Wukong splash art shows Garen more. And I think that has to do with lighting. I think it has to do with the way that they, or not lighting, but I think it has to do with the way that the photo's positioned. I feel like Garen stands out a lot more to me in the Wukong photo than he does in his own photo, and I think likewise, Wukong seems a lot more forward-facing in, in that photo. It's very weird. Okay. Anyways, not really impressed by either of the skins, unfortunately. Um, I don't know how to feel about either of them. I don't know what they're supposed to be referencing or referring to, but they just feel very bland to me. Um, Battle Academy, is this Fiora? Is this Fiora? Oh, it's Caitlyn. Okay. So, Battle Academy, Caitlyn, um, everything here looks pretty okay. I, I don't know how it looks in-game, but, again, it's just, maybe this is just one of those skin sets where it's really hard for me to feel, uh, feel intrigued. Oh, what is going on here? Well, this kind of looks cool. This reminds me of, uh, what is it, Kurama? Is it, uh, Kurama from, is it Kurama or, uh... Yeah, this is Karama! Wow, it's Karama! Or it's like Oni from Saturday Night's Landmasters. It's actually just Oni from Saturday Night's Landmasters. That is so cool. Oh my god, it makes me feel like a kid again. Wow, that is cool. So it's either Karama or it's Oni from Saturday Night's Landmasters. That's exactly what it makes me think of. I'm not sure who this is. It seems like this is Leona. The, th the problem is that Leona has a lot of really good skins, so depending on how this one appears in-game, it's going to need to really stand out in order to be justified as a, as a skin, but this Yone one is absolutely insane. And, oh, okay, Prestige Edition. Wow, yeah, you definitely need to get this, actually, yes. You definitely need to get this. That way, if you lose as Leona, the opponents still feel bad because you have a Prestige skin and they don't. Any truers? And then, obviously, because I already knew that this skin was the best, I ended up uh, going and looking at the chromas for the skin. It just looks really cool. Uh, overall, um, some of them do look kind of bland and like his other skins, but I think the base one does remind me of Kurama, and it reminds me of Yone. Obviously, there's some other ones here that have, like, a Sephiroth vibe to it, um, but overall, I think the skin is probably really cool. We're not gonna talk about this one down here, because honestly, this one found its way to Jeffree Star's YouTube channel. Um, but that's pretty much it. So... That is it for the patch notes one down. I'm sorry that this one was a little bit scuffed yet again. If you're curious about any of the T1 stuff that I'm wearing, like the jacket and the uh, the face mask and whatnot, you want other other T1 apparel, you can actually get uh, all the T1 apparel that you're seeing on me or on some of the T1 players when you watch the LCK games. There's a link in the description below. It's an affiliate link. Use that link with discount code LASHADOW, just like 
the Riot in-game shop, League of Legends uh, code, in order to get the Leandres and Morello to appear in the shop together. And you'll get a, you'll get a discount, and it massively supports me uh, by a lot, and I hope that you guys enjoy the products. So I'll see you all on the next patch rundown, which is going to be on T1 Fighting. See you guys later. Bye!